Okay, on the downside, uh, just a couple of points I wanted to draw up here. The first thing is pricing has moved north. Uh, lenders underpriced for risks. They didn't understand the risk and they better understand it now and therefore the cost of money is going to be higher. Okay? Lenders have a challenge providing funding for 10, 15, 20 years, the sort of lifetimes that uh, RSLs want to borrow the money for. So lenders are going to be moving to shorter lending horizons, 3, 5, 10 years, to reflect the profile on their balance sheet. They don't want a mismatch, long-term assets, short-term uh, liabilities. Uh, there is less competition, uh, and that's likely to continue, and every time we lose a major uh, lender in a merger, there's going to be one less competition. And uh, the RSLs need to understand that although the markets uh, will progressively reopen from here, funding will remain scarce relative to how it's been, uh, and evidence of that is the uh, Bank of England SLS scheme was four times oversubscribed. So actually there still is a shortfall of capital and um, that is going to make people who want it have to um, uh, pay up and demonstrate to the lenders that they have a strong covenant in terms of their ability to repay it. Okay, uh, on, the, on the sort of equity share side, builders, RSLs, family, affordability is slowly improving. I work in an estate agency, I see more first-time buyers coming in and saying today than where last year, I can afford to buy a house, I'd like to buy it, have to let them go home without the house because they can't get a mortgage and that will slowly improve. Affordability is improving, equity share improves affordability, the equity share can be staircased up and there is, uh, as long as there's an open market cascade for a section 106 and I've I spoke to one or two local authorities here today who are starting to free up their 106s so that lenders can lend against it, uh, lenders will lend. Uh, and it's just a point here, everybody talks about home ownership in the UK. Home ownership in the UK is already very high, and in Wales um, it says it's in the low 70%. Um, actually, it may be appropriate for a strong rented alternative for some people. Home ownership may not be right for everybody. So, what I'm going to suggest is that uh, RSLs need to adopt a collaborative approach with lenders. We need to work together, and the RSLs need to work on their housekeeping, uh, a risk-based annual review, they need to improve and establish depth executive capability in their board. Those boards need to enter into dialogue with the lenders more often. Uh, lenders are reluctant to attend board meetings because there's a fear of uh, shadow directorships being um, uh, created, um, but it doesn't mean that they aren't prepared to come along and talk and, and have an interface. Uh, the submission of a 30-year plan is pretty critical, uh, relationships are the key, and it makes sense that you have a lending panel, so not just one lender, but you have several lenders, that's reinforced by what's been happening in recent weeks, and it will help you uh, survive the good as well as the bad years. If I move on, um, this is the uh, lender wag continuing. Uh, the key words here are essentially maintaining lender confidence. I talked to you what happens to a lender if they lose the confidence of the investor. As RSLs, you want to borrow from um, lenders and you need to maintain the confidence of the lender uh, and their trust that you will be able to repay it. The one I'd like you to draw your eye to is the one that's in dark, the, the roadmap for supervision. It's untried in Wales and it could impinge on confidence. So stress testing, simulating events will give lenders confidence and will encourage lenders to be prepared to lend and it will encourage them to reduce the price of that lending when it comes. Okay, uh, the additional 112 million, is it on the table? Yes, there's some capacity issues. Yes, it will progressively uh, ease. Um, the lenders have tightened their criteria, so they won't lend it as readily as they might have done two or three years ago. Um, but providing the regulatory supervision and the board governance is in place, and providing that the rent review, the ACG regime, is capable of sustaining the repayment, uh, it will be available. Uh, EIB mentioned earlier, it's a definite runner. 
and the bond market shouldn't be ruled out. Glass Cymru uh, raised uh, many billions of pounds uh, of funding to enable them to invest in the infrastructure of the uh, uh, water provision in Wales. And it's not uh, inconceivable that those bond markets, which have lost confidence in securitisation, might still be interested in assets that are held by RSL and <coughs> authorities. And I don't really want to run this one through, one because I, I, I'm probably not close enough to it, other than to say, and it's too hard for you to read, but if I just explain, at the very top it's saying that there are lots of people who want to invest in fixed returns, okay? Banks and EIB, bonds, and largely um, pension funds. There is a, a wall of pension fund money that is looking for fixed interest returns so that the pension fund can pay the interest or pay the pensions, if you like, to the people in return. That is a huge wall of money. That's been part of the money that's caused the securitization challenge. They don't want to put that into mortgage securitizations, so they're looking for other safe alternatives where they can actually get a safe guaranteed return and actually housing assets managed through um, local authorities and or RSLs could well tick the box there. So uh, that's the essence of this. I put in the middle, for those of you who can't see, not just the 100 million that uh, Essex Review is talking about, I put 3 billion up there because this bond market is pretty big, it's very substantial and if uh, it was necessary, for example, to fund the 3 billion number is the last estimate I heard for the cost of the uh, Welsh housing quality standard being met. I put it in there. I believe with an honest broker, Welsh Assembly Government and or uh, RSLs could start to put this sort of thing together. It needs to be big to work, but it is possible. And if I then just sum up before I um, have your lunch, uh, um, we at the CML, we endorse the recommendations <coughs> And on a personal level, I really am pleased and delighted to see the high level at which housing is now being um, <coughs> addressed within Welsh Assembly Government and by your attendance at this room, it gives me confidence that we will press on and do something about it. Uh, the conclusions have sharp focus given what's happening in the credit crunch, but that's not a bad thing if it improves governance and it improves the quality of boards um, and, you know, we're not adverse to saying if you have to pay for the quality of the executive that, that a board needs, well, it's better to have the quality of the executive um, uh, and be able to access the funds. Um, great collaboration, that was really uh, the essence of what I was trying to say. Um, beefing up the regulatory regime will be particularly welcomed by lenders because it will make them feel the money is safer and anything you can do to convince a lender that they can trust you to repay it and have confidence in your ability to deliver in different scenarios will reduce the cost and improve the availability. The capacity for additional lending exists subject to the confidence in this governance regulation piece that I mentioned earlier uh, and we shouldn't rule out the other funding options because yes lenders and funding CML institutions is constrained but the bond markets are opening and they are huge very substantial indeed so cash is scared look at your ability to build confidence uh, to repay it and the money will come Thank you.